You're watching PTV. I want my PTV. You're watching PTV.
You're watching PTV. It's time for PTV Live. And now, here are the stars of PTV Live, Arnie, Doug, Ben, and Sherry. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to BTV Live. I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. I'm Ben. I'm Sherry. You can see things are a little different over there in the Oakland location. They are broadcasting from the kitchen. Why are you guys so blue? Uh, it could be the lighting that we've got. Uh, yeah. Why was I don't know. <laughs> Why are we so bright colored? You you can brighten us up a little bit if you like, Arnie. You've got the software. Warm okay, them up well, and cool us down. Let me warm them up just a bit. I'll, I'll see I'm if fussy. I, can do that. I don't like this. Let me, let me <laughs> warm them Excuse up. Warm them up. That's better. That's better. Yeah, I need to brighten and, and then, then also give them some temperature. <laughs> okay, now you got to cool us down. Okay. Oh my gosh. It will cool us down. Oh, brother. We need to be cooled down over here. We've been working for like the last okay, hour and a half. I like that. <laughs> okay, there what? you go. Okay. All right. Uh, before we Share even, I Okay, before we even get started, I want to make sure that I hit this here. Yay, thank you. <laughs> during the end oh. of the show, we always come in and we do a countdown clock, and during that countdown... Katrina dropped a 499 super chat saying, Oh, what does this button do? That's Katrina, <laughs> thank you so much. That was very sweet. Thank you very much. Everyone, it's, it's great to see you all here. Yeah, there's a lot of people. There are a lot of people here Smooches, tonight. That's all I could say. <laughs> uh, Doug should have noticed this before the stream began. No, I shouldn't have to say anything. It should have well, been already done. The amount of fiddle farting around to, that you do on to, this, to be on, know. To be honest, Richard, I'll tell you this. We were right down to the last second to make sure we were live tonight at the time. Uh, no yeah, matter. it's been crazy. It was crazy. You'll notice that we've got the Ecamm fam hashtag there. Uh, last October, I won a contest, and our annual subscription for Ecamm Live is about to renew. And as it turns out, I won a free year subscription they're applying it this week to our accounts, so we have another wow. year of Ecamm Live. Great. Yeah, that it's covered thanks to Ecamm. I mean, they actually did a contest, and I won it. So, I was right. Hello, Simba 2. Oh, so we are, um, we're actually, like I said, they're broadcasting for the kitchen. So what's going on in the kitchen tonight? Uh, well, for one thing, I am not in my happy place. He's helping me out. Yeah, Sherry. Sherry is the cook in the house. I'm merely uh, what's just below a sous chef. You're the percher. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, we'll go with that. Uh, we're gonna be preparing a simple uh, dish called stacked enchiladas. Well, here's the thing. Our family really likes enchiladas, but I usually do it the lazy way where I just cut up all of the tortillas into little pieces and mix it all together. <laughs> well, tonight I'm going to do them stacked, which is one of the first ways I learned how to do them so that you can get an idea. I don't like doing rolled, so don't even expect me to do rolled enchiladas anytime. I will always stack them or chop them up. <laughs> I just don't like rolling. Well, just me. And that's how she rolls. Uh, well, Doug and I had a... <laughs> we had enchiladas. <laughs> yeah. We have enchiladas. And oh, look at that. Thank you, Miss Wanda. Miss Wanda. Oh, Wanda. Wanda. says you're making enchiladas, my favorite. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> $10 super chat. Yeah, you know what? En enchiladas, as Moira Rose calls them. Are the they going to be creamy? Oh, well, and I do, I do have to tell you that the ones my family likes to are just plain old cheese. So sometimes we'll do chicken. Sometimes I'll do green chicken enchiladas because I know my son-in-law likes green chicken enchiladas. But for us, it's usually the red sauce with lots of cheese. And I hate to tell you guys this, but there's really not 
a recipe for it, except for when we go into the sauce and even that's loosely based. So if you're looking for a hard and fast recipe to follow, there isn't one. <laughs> no, we'll go ahead and write something down for you and get it to you. We'll make sure that it's published in our cookbook when we get one. So uh, <laughs> we already have requests for a cookbook and we have some recipes ready for it. But yes, lots oh, great. of cheese. And Ben, you prepared that cheese ahead, right. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got cheese, we've got onion chopped. We just need to go over to the stove and start cooking the sauce so we can actually get this thing in the oven so it'll be ready to go once before the show's over. Okay, great. Go ahead and get started. Ready? Yeah, go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm tech counting you. Okay, sure. How can I help you? Well, right now what I'm going to do is pour a little bit of oil into this pan. What do, what do we need to put this on at? Put it on at about 7 for right now. Yeah, it needs to light first. It's not lighting. Oh, there we go. We got a super chat of a dollar ninety nine from Candy Mom. She wants to get a pre order on the cookbook. Oh dear lord! So there's a little bit of oil down in the bottom of this pan, as you can see. Probably need a little bit more. Now, what you're going to be doing with this is pretty much just making a gravy is basically what it is. And when I make my gravies, I do equal parts of flour and oil. But with this, I don't. What I do with this is equal parts of flour and chili powder. Sometimes I will um, use more chili powder, just depending on what, what it go, you know, what I want. But what I will do is put in the equal amounts of liquid, to flour. By the so way, DHP is saying what a clean stove. What a, what a clean stove, yeah. Uh, this is what I do best in the kitchen. Watch. Four, <laughs> five. Ben? Yeah, applause on that. Level six? Yeah, and then I'm just gonna get an idea of chili sauce. And our favorite one, is Gebhardt's chili powder. Or another one that's really a good one too is any kind of New Mexico red chili that you can find. I think that yeah, you need to. <laughs> and Donna Jaworski just gave us a 9.99 super chat saying, I'd like an autographed copy of the PTV cookbook delivered in person, please. I think that could be arranged. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. And our cousin, Kathy. Ben? What? Kathy is just saying, oh, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so then what you're basically doing is just, you know, mixing it up with the oil and kind of making a bit of a, of a roux without it being a roux, if you know what I mean. You're just basically mixing this up with a little bit of oil, the chili and the flour. And then, Ben, there's six cups of water. water there. Yep. If you want to come over here on my other side and start pouring it in. Yeah, I can do that. There you go. That's the sound of deliciousness. All of it? Yep, all of it. Yeah, you got to make sure it doesn't burn. So you got to add that water quickly before that flour yeah. burns. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're we've we've ordered or we've added the water. And then, if you want to bring over that chopped garlic that's there, I like to add fresh chopped garlic to mine. Okay. So just put it in. Now, the, Wanda has never heard of stacked enchiladas. Really? It's just like a casserole, is what it's like. It is. You. Can you can do it two it's lasagna. You people. can do it two ways. Uh, I'll be able to do dishes for you guys. Thank you, Arjuns. Appreciate that. It's lasagna. That's pretty much all it is. You're layering the tortillas, the sauce, the cheese, and the onion. Yeah, replace the pasta with tortillas, and uh, 
the tomato sauce with the chili sauce, and you pretty much got a, a Mexican lasagna. Yeah, there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can either stack them individually so that you've got like a almost what looks like a stack of pancakes, and you can love you know you can put your uh, fillings inside the tortillas that way. And it's, you're just laying them out like a, a lasagna, essentially. And then what I'm going to do is add some salt. And this, guys, I'm sorry, I don't measure. I just kind of eyeball it and then taste it. Um, I love me some pancakes. Yeah, me too. The, now, the uh, the thing about uh, stacked pan, uh, stacked enchiladas, not stacked pancakes, it's kind of like a stacked pancake thing. Stacked enchiladas can also be served with a fried egg on top. It's wonderful, actually. Well, the chilaquiles... Chilequiles are usually that way. They're usually a breakfast dish, but it's basically an enchilada with an egg on top. Ben, can you get me a spoon so I can taste to make sure I've got enough salt in this? Nathan, thank you so much for joining us again. It's great to have you. Uh, by the way, Richard does suggest beef bouillon in, instead of salt. You can get a, some flavor that way as well. I imagine I you can like do that. The, yeah, I don't like the beef flavor with this. This, the Sorry, Richard. Beef, this beef Handy mom, Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for, for what you do. For the super chat, definitely. Uh, can't wait to hear what you think of the replay. By the way, uh, in case you're wondering where Doug is, he's just right over here. Doug, you can wave. There he is. Oh, that's not a bite. I'm just a bite? Yeah. Doug. I'm sorry. What, what's Doug doing? Doug has a client that needs something like immediately. Well, not exactly. Oh. I'm, I'm, it's on my brain. So since you guys need to be focused on you two, I'm not important right now. He's not important. Doug, you're always important. No. Don't tell him that. He'll believe it. Hey, Jim. <laughs> She's not making beef enchiladas. These are just cheese enchiladas this time around. That's right. Donna, Donna that's right. Cheese enchiladas. So, uh... Once you've got this sauce going, how long does it usually take for this to get going, Sherry? It's just a matter of this thickening up, and I've got it on a pretty high heat, so that's why I'm sticking with it, so that it doesn't um, burn, because this will burn very quickly. Because <laughs> it's like a gravy, you just need to constantly watch it. And then when I get to a certain consistency, then I'll take it off because once you put it in the oven to bake, it really doesn't matter. I just don't like soup. By the way, if I if I were cooking it, it would burn. Yeah. Doug, Doug, Doug matters. That's what Don was saying. I think Doug matters. <laughs> I think that way. So you can, I think you can see see in the pan that it is thickening up some. It's not as as loose. So it's all Ready. I need you to make real New Mexico beef enchiladas. This is a disaster. <laughs> Come on, Richard. Sorry, Richard. You can do them with Our pork. Family. You can do them with chicken. You can do them with beef. Right now, we're just doing them with cheese. And that's what we actually like here in this house. Okay. And we're the ones eating it. I'm going to take it off. <laughs> and do you need it over here? Come over here to this camera. And. Ooh, that looks so good. Let me it's nice. It, it thickened up nicely, Sherry. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah. I think I know what I'm doing. Ben, we have a did question. Did you turn off the burner? Ben, we have a question from Jim of More Sunshine, please. He said, do you still like your choice of ice maker? Is there anything you wish was different? He may be on the market for one. Um, I don't have any complaints with it. Maybe the shape of the ice, but where'd my I, ladle go, Ben? I don't know. We're well, I'm gonna have to use a little gravy ladle. Deborah's asking Sherry's for... ladle is missing. Please tell us a shape the dishwasher. Super tall. Well, uh dream of Deborah, to be honest, Sherry is like four foot twelve. So uh No, I know I'm five foot even. That's four foot twelve. I like five feet even. I'll go so with... what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of the sauce in the bottom of the pan. This Ooh. ladle sucks. Yeah, yeah. Let me, you let me. need to find the bigger <laughs> one. I don't know. I don't know where it went. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I usually go buy a blows. Sherry, Kathy just says, Ay Dios mio. 
<laughs> about what my height or the ladle probably all of it yeah. Where did our little go? I don't know. See, that's what happens when there are so many people putting things away and they put them wherever they feel like putting them. Okay. Todd of Fox Hollow is here. Todd just dropped a video yesterday of um, making these great little margarita cheese bite things. Cheesecake. They're really delicious looking. So you might want to check those out. Uh, ben, can you angle the camera down a bit so we can see the pan that Jerry is putting? Sure. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here, but Wanda says your sous chef is failing, Sherry. <laughs> and then for these, what I will do is I will. Oh, that's much better. Let me take a bunch of these out. <laughs> And what I will do is I will just kind of quickly dip them in the sauce a little bit just so that they don't totally fall apart. Some people do this, some don't. When I do stacked, I like to do it because it just, it helps the tortilla. And sometimes what you can do is you can also take the tortilla and give it a light fry. Just put in the oil, turn it over, and then just let it go, put it in the sauce. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, I don't like that though. Sure. I don't know what happened to yeah. the ladle. Missing ladle over here, guys. Harry, Kathy is saying you look yeah. like mom in the kitchen. Oh. oh, heaven forbid. Oh, as long as I don't act like her, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, that was a hit. <laughs> I'll take the looks, just not the acting. Yeah, okay. mom can be very I feisty. Label. That yeah. might melt. <laughs> yes, Ben. That's, okay. Ben, that is a punch ladle, not a gravy ladle. Later. <laughs> okay, then I will take some onions, chopped onions, and just layer some on there. And then layer cheese. Uh, Spiker's Crazy Adventures is here. They're saying that they're really enjoying this live. Now oh you can gosh. you can use almost any cheese you want. Our cheese here of preference is just a plain old Monterey Jack. But I know there are people that will use pepper jack. There are people that will use the Mexican blend cheese. Um, but our our cheese of choice is um, Jack. Is Jack. You know what? I don't I don't think I need this in here anymore. Richard is the maid, Sherry. He says, these are not stacked enchiladas. Stacked enchiladas are not assembled like a lasagna. Each plate must be, is made yes. individually with fried corn tortillas. Yes, indeed, they are. There are alternatives. This is a very quick, down and dirty way of stacked, like a lasagna. Now, are those corn tortillas? Or they, oh, I lost it. They are corn. These are corn. Now, I hope you're using... And they're tearing on me. Stuff. Uh, Sherry, you, you what? How many Puerto Ricans does it take to find a ladle? <laughs> <laughs> is that from Kathy? That is from Kathy. Obviously, obviously uh, villagers. A lot of us. Kathy Edelman is our cousin. So obviously, uh, we don't have enough Puerto Ricans here doing that. <laughs> we need Wanda there. Yeah. Uh, Wanda, you want to get on a plane? Get out here fast, please. <laughs> Oy vey. Kathy, meet Wanda. Wanda, meet our cousin Kathy. Uh, Wanda <laughs> is another one of our wonderful Puerto Rican friends here in our village. Again, that sounds very offensive. You want to preheat the oven to 350, please? Uh, oh, yeah. Do uh, free spice cheese from the store. Please don't tell me it's convenient because it's made with sawdust. What? What's that? People buying pre-sliced cheese from the store. Yeah. Doug is, oh. Doug is not a fan of the pre-grated cheeses at the stores. Uh, they are convenient. They seem to taste fine, but they add cellulose to the cheese, which keeps it as an anti-caking agent. So, so it stick together? Thing. It changes the melting point of the cheese. So because... So I'm just... Of the cellulose I'm just putting a little bit of this in here. Yeah. Nice. Adana is saying that uh, we need to have dinner at, at the Palm. The I, palm. I, I, well, we'd have to get to Florida first. Okay. 
Uh, hey, Benji. Benji's here. Buenas noches a todos. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, <laughs> gracias. Doing well. <laughs> doing well. And hello, Rosa. It's ben, Benji, ellos no saben hablar español muy bueno. Yep, I think huh? that way all the time. Yeah. Podemos hablar de ellos y ellos no van a conocer qué estamos uh, diciendo. This is part of the bilingual section of our show today. Never use store-bought shredded cheese ever, ever, according to the Orlando guy. <laughs> I'm so all for convenience, you continue, but that is... You continue ladling, or not ladling, but uh, dipping the, the tortillas. And, and, yeah, and layering, and then, um, then you pour the rest of the sauce on top and stick it in the oven. And we dump more cheese on too? Yeah, more cheese. Lots more cheese. You're saying muy bien. To which Richard says, bien, gracias, y tu pendejo. <laughs> oh my gosh. Those are Who said that? Richard. <laughs> Richard. All right, we need some more tortillas. Yeah, just one more layer. Do we yeah. have enough over there? Richard, you more? know that word means th means something different in Mexican culture than it does uh, in Puerto Rico. Or even Spanish from Spain. Yeah. By the way, uh, it's Donna got two different meanings. Donna says that after grating her cheese in a food processor, she will never buy store-bought shredded again. And Ben, how did you do yours? We have a salad shooter. I used that in an episode of Life with Ben when I was working on macaroni and cheese a couple of years ago with Megan. And you were very challenged putting it together. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm challenged, period, But in the he kitchen. got it together tonight just fine. I didn't have to tell him anything about it. And here we have Jim. He exactly what he Jim is asking, ¿Cómo se dice this little sucks in español? <laughs> Yo no sé. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, no sé la palabra para little. <laughs> By the way, who Nathan wants to know who tells better jokes, Arnie, Doug, or Ben? Who wants to know? Nathan. I, I will personally say this. It depends on the situation. Okay. It also depends on the story and timing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's, what's the towel for? Oh, yeah. Wipe my mess. Okay. Oh, and we're done with the tortillas? Yep. All right. Kathy says, I'm actually loving this recipe, but I wasn't paying attention to how Sherry made the sauce. Uh, how I made the what? The sauce? How you made the sauce. We, we, can, we can do a private chat, Kathy. You, you know where we live. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes. <laughs> oh, Megan says the boy is watching tonight. So say hello. He's not supposed to be chatting. Oh. Hi, Hi boy. boy. Hello, boy. Good to have you with us tonight. We need a twist tie. Yeah, so, so remember it's over, that. Don't chat. <laughs> yeah, no emojis like last time that oh, got you in trouble. There's the twist tie. Just try okay, to Okay, so that's two pounds of cheese that we used. And Just like we would in the lasagna. And Jim says, hello, mm -hmm. Megan Turner. Hi, Megan. More low on. Get me a, a Every, Everyone's saying hi to the boy. Oh, very sweet. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, yeah, there's lots of sauce there. You don't want to miss out on that. No, I don't. Sherry's using a spatula to get all the sauce out of the pan or out of the pot because we're kind of dripping here on, on the top, and we need a little bit more. I could have used a little bit more, but you know what? We're going to do We're making we it have. work. It'll, it'll appear more like a lasagna. Yeah, you know what? Wanda's right. Megan, you missed the finished portion of the show. What portion? When they were talking Spanish with each other. Oh. oh. <laughs> Megan's pretty good with Spanish. She's a lot better than her uncles. Yeah, Megan says she also use her face to get the sauce out of the pot. 
<laughs> yeah, she does. She would. Okay, so what I'm doing is just kind of. She's smoothing out the sauce on the cheese. Just so that it kind of incorporates into the cheese. Mind you, we didn't have to fold in the cheese. Yeah, no. So this is what this is what it, it looks like ready to go into the oven. That's wonderful. And how okay, put this in? We're still waiting for the oven to warm up. Okay. While we're waiting for that though, I will go ahead and do the Mexican rice that we use as a side dish. I didn't get any beans out because I figured I wasn't going to make any tonight, but we've been able to make them um, in the Instant Pot, and I don't know that I'll ever go back to canned Rosarita beans Oh, after doing them in the Instant Pot because it's really easy in the Instant Pot, and boy, are they good. They really are. Never did I think it would they would come out so well. So let me go back over to... Megan calls the Instant Pot voodoo. She was yeah. actually afraid of using it. She thought it might explode in her house. Benji says enchiladas are Mexican lasagna or lasagna is Italian enchiladas. Hmm. <laughs> Very well put, Benji. <laughs> you know, Benji's been dropping pictures of his trip to Gilroy Gardens, and it really makes me want to go. It's been years oh, yeah, since I've been I'm to... I'm kind of waiting until Christmas and for COVID to die down a little bit before I go. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a fun. It really, is fun there. So, uh, Richard. Okay, Spanish everybody. Rice. Spanish rice. We're gonna start on the Spanish rice while I wait for the uh, for the oven to warm. And this too. This is a well-worn caldero. That um. Is very popular in Puerto Rican kitchens, and I've got like four different sizes of them. So for this, what I am doing is putting a little bit of oil in the pan. I only use Le Creuset, so. <laughs> well, I've tried Le Creuset, but it doesn't do as well for the Spanish rice as the Calveros do. So I also there you go. Our stainless steel for our rice aroni. I, you know, I, I will say this about the Le Creuset, just like France, it's all about form over function. No, it's that, a fine. That, that it's it's it, fine. No, 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 no. No, let me finish. We're talking about doing Mexican rice. This caldero seems to do a better job than the cast iron Le Creuset. In does. that realm, I would say the French form over function definitely does come into play. We went to. Paris, my cousin Diana and I, and we were amazed at how beautiful everything looked, but how difficult things seem to operate. Yeah. And we came across, or we came, we came away with the belief that the French are all about the look and the function is a second thought. Yeah. Okay. Now remember Here we go. also, Wanda does say Le Creuset will not make Pagao. That's true. That's, That's true. very true. And there is nothing better than the pagao. And for those of you that don't know what pagao is, it's the part it's of the rice. Ice. It's not burnt. Okay. It sticks to the bottom of the pan. Let's, let's go to the like, Let's go to the cooking, like Arnie. Crunchy. Okay, so what I have here is two cups of just plain rice in oil, and you toast it. And again, you kind of just eyeball the amount of oil that you use. You don't um, measure the oil. Turn it up a bit. <laughs> I've said before, I'll say it again, teaching would be the greatest profession in the world if it weren't for all the students. <laughs> oh, Jim, I so agree with you, especially during these times. Right, we just opened up last Monday and we already have five COVID cases within our school. So, yeah. all, all I'm saying, all what I, do you mean you don't know about the caldero, Kathy? All I can love is saying that it's form follows function in business. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, uh, Kathy said something about the, uh, the profession about teaching. She also makes sure that you have to include. If it weren't for all the students, 
and the parents? Well, I, I agree. School would be much better with just the kids and not the parents trying to second guess everything you do <laughs> or feel that you have to have a say in every decision that's made. Well, Sherry, I you, have to say, I have to say with, really good. with our COVID protocol, with our COVID protocol, we don't have parents allowed on campus. So it's been kind of nice in the morning. We go out and we wait at the gates for the kids and check them in and off they go to their line. And the parents, I feel like I'm in a zoo because the parents are standing, clawing at the fence, watching their kids. Jerry, Kathy is asking, why do I not know about this box? I have no idea, Kathy. This is what this is what mom has always used to make her arroz con pollo in is a bigger caldero. Yeah, Kathy, it's been a long time since you've come over. This is a medium-sized one. Kathy, you want to know how that's spelled? It is... C-A-L... D-A-L-D-E-R-O. Yeah. Oh, that is. I have one, two, three. I've got four different sizes. That's right, Benji. You got it. <laughs> Circle gets the square for Benji. <laughs> In fact, this was one of the things that my son Jeff asked for for a wedding present was a cadero. Now, did he get one? Yeah, he got one. He got a set of them. Oh, from Wanda, Wanda is asking, the biggest debate in the Puerto Rican household is, do you wash the rice or not? This rice, no, I do not. Because if I did, then I would not be able to... Um, to toast it. It would be too wet for toasting. Okay, guys, the upload has to come on. It's too hot. And we're about 25 degrees away from popping in the enchiladas. Wow. Wanda, had, her mom has a huge caldero so big that it took up two burners. She had five kids. <laughs> okay. Wow. The biggest caldero I have is a six quart, so that's pretty big, Wanda. So how long does it take to toast the rice? It shouldn't take much longer because once it starts, it's one of those things that once it starts toasting, it really takes off, so you have to be careful with it. You can really smell it here, too. It smells delicious. It gives off almost a nutty scent. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yep, it does. Hello, ALJ. Welcome to the, welcome to the show. And Amy, thank you for being here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stick the enchiladas in. Go for it. Wonderful, Ben. Just wanna make sure people can see you actually using the oven, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> it's part of my magic. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see or not, but it's starting to get a little translucent and starting to toast. So you can see a changing color. And once it gets a little bit golden on the majority of it, then I will start adding everything else. Now for me with rice, I use two cups of liquid per each cup of rice. So that's just a general rule of thumb that I go by in my kitchen. So. Okay, Richard is a fun fact. Balderos are used in cook, to cook rice, meat, raise meat, hammer stews, and soups. They're rounded sides, heat up evenly and quickly, allowing you to uh, just, uh, to cook a variety of different foods. Yes, yep. they, they're very versatile pot. Now, it, are they they're aluminum? They're aluminum. They're yeah. yeah. And they're, they're aluminum they're, because they, that's why they burn because they're not stainless steel. Yeah, and they are. Uh, can't put a lot of acidic things in there because aluminum does not like. Yeah, but that also means that they're not too heavy, like the uh, cast iron, crusade pot, things like that. Right. Lodge. <laughs> uh, Morris says this orange does not look aluminum. It is. It's it, it heavy isn't. gauge it, aluminum. Yeah, it's a heavy gauge aluminum does not look like a Coke can. It's much, much thicker. 
Okay, you can see it's starting to, to change color here. So I'm almost ready. It yeah, smells. You, I love yeah. the smell. And like, yeah, Wanda's right. You don't generally wash them in the dishwasher. You soak them to get all the stuff out of them. So that rice looks like it's just about ready. Yep. Okay, how can I help you? Do you want to set the steam off? Yeah, sure. How do I do that? The water? No, the tomato sauce first. Tomato sauce. So because it's a two to one ratio of liquid to rice, I'm putting in eight, eight ounces of tomato sauce. And there it is. Fun fact. And then what you can do then is put some of this water yeah. in the can to rinse it out. Okay. So Richards has a fun fact. The main difference between a caldero pot and a Dutch oven is that the caldero is traditionally made with aluminum rather than stainless steel. And Dutch ovens will be with stainless steel or even cast more iron. so cast iron, like uh, like Le Creuset, like Lodge or, or Le Creuset. And okay. yeah, you, you can clean them very well in Dawn and a Brillo pad. Okay, so that's the four <laughs> cups of liquid. It's three cups of water and one cup of tomato sauce. And then now to this, no. I'll add a little bit of salt. How I make mine one to one, it's one cup of, little, cup of can. A little, bit of, a little bit of garlic powder. Oh God, she's just dumping it in. She's not measuring it out. I don't. Measure. And then I never have. <laughs> Oh my God, you're driving me crazy. And then, and then some oregano leaves that you roll through into your hands just to release some of the oil. Doug, baking is scientific. Cooking is more of a oh, uh, I, oh, I'll, wait, I'll you, a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half a teaspoon. I don't dump. <laughs> I like uniformity. I like precision. I have never... I have never measured the spices that I put into it. And then what I need to do is just taste the broth. <laughs> yeah, Kathy's asking, who measures? <laughs> Kathy it's says, who measures? Yeah. I measure everything. Yes. You think you know how much a cup of mayonnaise? Okay. I don't want to yeah. all up again, but it doesn't work that way. You're what do you think? Mayonnaise. Measure okay. people. And one is not only measure when baking. Yeah, that's good. So then what I do is I let it sit here one. until it, Looks like it starts to boil. Okay. And then I turn it down and I put the lid on until it cooks. And look at that. It is starting to boil already. Yep. It doesn't take very long. Well, that's, it's been heating up for a, quite a while. What's this fun fact from Richard? Traditional calderos season over time to enhance the flavor of your recipes. The sturdy handles are yep. good for handling and can be used on gas or electric stovetops. Yeah, because yep. you, you get that, the different coating things, kind of like a, a reference to an episode of Grace and Frankie. Uh, it, it leaves a little stank in the caldero, so it adds flavor to the next dish. Now this is what my my smallest one looks like compared to this one. Yeah, that is a small. This one. Bring it over to the, bring it over to the other camera and show us. Here, this is a small one. Here are the two the the other three that are not in use. Yeah, I see. You always have more than one Colorado in a household. Well, at least in our Hispanic household. So you can see it now that it's pretty much at a rolling boil. Not quite rolling, but it's bubbling. So I will turn it down to about a three. And then I usually put the lid on 
with just a little bit of room for some of the steam to escape. And just wait till it's done. And that's all there is to it. Wonderful. Okay. I should get my butt over here. Beep, beep. <laughs> what? I have to spend five dollars when I don't want to. Love you, Kathy. Thanks for joining tonight. Check the replay. Make sure that you see how it turns out. Okay, I'm going to lift our camera just a little bit. Okay, great. Ah. You okay, Sherry? Yeah, I'm just opening the cabinet and losing bread out of it. Uh-oh. That's not good. No. It's okay. Okay. So, um, we've got about 13 and a half minutes before we check on it. the enchiladas before we check to see how they're coming along. Okay. What did you have it at? 400? 350. 350. Oh, no, you got to crank that sucker up. It's never going to cut. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. Oh, well. They know they're rubbing. <laughs> and I've done it enough times, Doug. What is, what kind of vessel is it in? Glass or ceramic? Ceramic. I wasn't paying attention. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> that's yeah. okay. Well, you were you were working for your client. Parting around with something else. I'm trying to find out. I know the difference between a. Here we go. <laughs> that's a form of being a bully. <laughs> what is? <laughs> What's being a bully? That's being a bully. What the Dougism? Ooh. Yeah, it's a bully. <laughs> But I know I don't think so. A Bordeaux bottle of wine and a clarinet style of bottle of wine. <laughs> I guess Donna like that. Hold on. She's laughing at Doug. It's being a bully. <laughs> oh brother. Hey, look, we, we, we talk about Sherry derailing the show all the time. You come up with a lot of unique words in your vernacular. That uh, <laughs> see, everyone is loving the Dougisms. <laughs> it's just part of what makes up your magic, Doug. Arnie just wanted to bring attention to it. Exactly, but he made me create. <laughs> oh, wonderful! So, oh. <laughs> thank you, Spikers. Glad you like that. We're gonna also make sure that we have as much of the recipe written up for you so that you can do it. If you're interested in this recipe, go ahead and drop us an email, peppertreevilla at gmail.com, and we will do our best to get the recipe to you. How many tortillas did we use? I didn't even count. I don't, I, we lost count. <laughs> I would say about... Uh, uh, no. Bottles and um, Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Yeah. Doug does some graphic design work, and sometimes he has to overlay labels on existing bottles, so he knows the difference between a clarinet style and a Bordeaux style bottle. And what one goes into each one. That's all like, you have to get it just right. You can't have screw top and you have to have pork and then it has to have a cap on it. And I want a bottle of almond sparkling wine. Well, order it. I have to, I keep forgetting to. How far Where do you get an almond sparkling wine? The winery that I went to for that wedding. Oh, right. It was so good. The one in the South Bay. Yeah, down in, in Morgan Hill. Morgan Hill, which is near Gilroy, which is where Gilroy Gardens is that Benji likes. And so they well. also had the. Uh, oh, she's killing the Wanda, the bullion. One the more ten dollars. Ten dollars for a more Doug. Oh, you're gonna please. do ding ding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, that winery is also where they had the wine slushies at the bar. Oh, that, yeah, that did sound. Oh, there's the Diet Coke. Right On tap. It yeah. was really good. Yeah, yeah, there, there's definitely Diet Coke. Right Ours was not. I'm good. sticking to water tonight. So, Wanda, thank you so much for that tiny thank super you. chat. I think she wants more. <laughs> oh, it's warm in this kitchen. Oh, it's hell. Yeah. It's been very warm. What's up with the pants? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not moving fast enough for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sherry's a little overheated. And we've got a, a 
a, a tower a, fan. A, a tower, an oscillating tower fan here. Yeah. By the way, we don't have air conditioning. So, what are National Food Days? This, the food days we've this got week? this week. Ones that really interest me. Uh, Wednesday is National Snow Noir Day and National Soft Serve Ice Cream Day. So, can you put the soft serve in the Pinot Noir? Why don't you just have Why Pinot not? Noir soft serve? A Pinot Noir soft serve sounds good to me. Yeah. But then there's also next Sunday is National Spumoni Day. Ooh. Did Spaghetti go, Factory? Yeah. Spaghetti Factory, definitely. That's where we usually get most of Anytime we get Spumoni, it's at the Spaghetti Factory. Because they've got the best one. They don't have all of the candied cherries in it and all the other stuff. Yeah. They just, just have, it's like a Neapolitan, it's but it's pistachio. Chocolate, strawberry, and pistachio. We should try. No, it's cherry. Cherry, Chop, chocolate, cherry, and, and pistachio, pistachio ice cream. We should try making a Spumoni sometime. For what? National Spumoni. <laughs> Okay. You know, I've got a recipe for a pistachio cake that Jeff wants me to make for him. <laughs> I like what Richard has to say about Doug's. Richard Doug Doug is, is when he uses the word suckle to replace drink, as in, I want to <laughs> suckle on, this, on that mimosa for a bit. <laughs> That's bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check my rice. Yeah, check the rice, see how it's going. Oh, I didn't know it's it's happy. Yeah, it's roller National coaster. Roller Coaster Day. It's going. It's the going. Rice. See the rice? Let's check it out. Oh, look at that. It's starting to, wow, that's really pumping up fast. Yep. The focusing in and out is making me not. I know, I don't know what's going on with my camera doing that. Oh, you're using the Sherry Cam, or you're using it the an iPhone? No, no, it's the iPhone Cam that I'm yeah, my, my school iPhone thing too, and it it focuses. What? By the way, yeah, it's okay. Wanda, when was your birthday? Yeah, Wanda's saying, "I'm glad I wasn't born on National Potato Day." Potato <laughs> Day. Yeah. What's What's wrong with National Potato Day? Well, national potato. You don't want to be. On, you don't uh, want to be teased that you look like a potato, do you? I am already teased that I look like a potato. You are not. <laughs> I like French fries. I like baked potatoes, but I can't eat a lot of them because I've got to watch my carbs. Yeah, that's right. Lemonade day. Ooh, bacon lovers. Day. See, here it is. Her birthday is on Wednesday, which uh, is National Soft Serve Ice Cream Day and National Pinot Noir Day. And yes, she is going to be going to Disneyland. Oh, she goes oh. I want to go to Disneyland. I haven't been to Disneyland in almost two years. I then, know, it'll be three Rick, years in September, huh? Or Rick, October, when is it? September. Rick asking what's new at Trader Joe's. Here we go. Oh. What did I, I can go grab something. Yeah, go grab it. Go. What's new at Trader Joe's? So yeah, he'll be up. He's going to be up to second. Get? Yeah, it depends on I which, don't remember. one of two items. Shall I go get it? I'll be right back. Doug. Well, we got to find out what he's bringing first. Well, if we can bring both. No, oh, I would only bring one. I would wait. Yeah. Speaking of potatoes, these are a new potato chip. From Trader Joe's called it's the Potato Chip. <laughs> gotcha. Carolina Gold style barbecue flavor ridge cut potato chips. Ooh. Hold on, Ben. Yeah. There you go. Show that bag very nice and big now. There you go. There you go. To be honest, so we're gonna we were not, we were prepared. We were, no, we were not, not going to do. This. We were not going to do this tonight. Okay, let's try this out. Um, I don't like the mustard taste on these. Yeah, that's yeah. is it. Tank for mustard. Mustard and vinegar. And vinegar. Yeah, mustard vinegar. Yeah, Carolina Gold is. I don't like them. A, a, a sweeter kind of almost a sweet tangy barbecue sauce. But this is not too. This bold. isn't even really. Sweet. Sweet. This isn't even really sweet. No. It's like spicy. 
It's not tangy, it's spicy. Yeah, it's a spicy mustard kind of mustard. Oh, thank you. Doug likes them. I like them too. Wow. So yeah, They're okay. I'm I'm with, with, these would not be a go-to for me. I'm with one. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that they are they're not red. Oh, I think they're red. Yeah, I would I would choke them. Well, down. Why would a California gold be red? <coughs> Carolina. Oh my gosh. I gotta get something to drink. Carolina Gold it's is barbecue. My throat. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. I think Ben inhaled some of that spice from the chips. I think he did. Hello, Mike Wheeler. Excuse me while I put my pot to. Yeah. And Donna says she's right. It's because Carolina barbecue is not traditional barbecue. No. Oh, I need to. It's not. What made me think of him? Your what? What made me think of Mike Wheeler? Oh, okay. What? Oh, you have show and tell. She has something to show. What? Something made made her think of Mike Wheeler. Mike Wheeler, you were thought of by Sherry. Is Mike with us this evening? Yes. Hi, Mike. I've been away from the uh, I've been away from the chat, so uh, I've been a little busy here in the kitchen with Sherry. <laughs> what do you have, Sherry? Oh. So before school started, somebody in their infinite wisdom in the mothership for Oakland Unified <laughs> sent a bunch of. <laughs> Sent a bunch of things to different sites to in, to try and have kids get these gifts as an incentive for being in school. One, they didn't send enough for every student that was going to be there on the first day. Two, they sent things that were not for some of our kids. Like they sent Bluetooth earbuds and Bluetooth headphones. So the principal said, no, we're not giving out any of these things. The teachers took some things to their classroom and they said, and then he said, whatever you guys want, take home because we're not giving these things to the kids. So what I brought home reminded me of Mike Wheeler and I will be sending it to him. I'm just not quite sure when, but this is what it is. It's a oh Monopoly game. My oh my goodness. Frozen 2 Monopoly. Shut up. That is amazing. Mike Wheeler, it looks like you're going to be getting Frozen 2, and there's a nice little picture of Olaf on the front. That is amazing. But, oh, on look, at the, look at the pieces. Oh, that is awesome. Oh my goodness. There's, there's a snowflake, Anna, and Elsa. Elsa. And some other dudes. They, uh, yeah, all the characters are there. Right down to Olaf is one this of This is. Oh, beyond. that's really cool. And it says um, Journey Through Arendelle and Beyond. Um, we, Mike, do you mind if I take the plastic off of it to no, see what it looks no, like no, we don't inside? Have, we, we don't have to. Because I want to see what the what let, the uh, let, we'll Mike, leave it into. It. Don't sully it up. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to see what some of the streets are. That is <laughs> the appropriate vocabulary. That's not a made-up word. It's not. <laughs> but not many people use the word sully. The skies. <laughs> The sky's awake. Disaster tax. <laughs> disaster a tax. Disaster tax. Oh my god. Let's just let's, let's just say that they have adapted both. Family chest. Earth. Did climate change on there. Royal decree. <laughs> climate change. <laughs> so it's no longer frozen. It's melting. <laughs> Water. Dark sea. Water tax. And all of the little, the, the, all of the little streets have um, country. Okay. And the thing is, is that I, it's I both say, in yeah. English and French. Yeah, the, it is. It's a bilingual game. Yeah. So Mike oh, says you can't open it. Oh, but wait a minute. That's the enchiladas. Yeah. Just wait. Almost, then you're gonna right. have to tape it, and then it's gonna explode. No, explode. It, it is not going to explode. Yeah. Mike says, "Go ahead and open it." Okay, Mike. She's opening. Okay, Mike, she's opening. And then it's going to be 
forever and then you're never yeah. able to get it and it's going to be taped. Oh, stop. I can too. Do you know how many times I've done things like this, Doug? Yeah, but when you ship it, how are you going to ship it now that it's open without everything flying all over? You put it, you wrap it in brown paper and then re and then put it in a box to ship it. I'm not going to ship it just as is. I'm putting it in another box either way. Wow. It's so oh, my oh, goodness. That's really cool. It's a double box. It's a double box. And it's got... Okay, so... Fingerprints. Fingerprints. Okay, wow. so what would normally be Boardwalk and Park Place? That is awesome. Uh, we've got Dark Sea and Truth Revealed. Okay. They, okay. They really took a lot of liberties with creating this edition of Monopoly. Yeah. There's a, there's the or what are the orange spots? New York. The, usually Tennessee, New York. Tennessee. James. Okay. Those are Love Will Thaw, A Frozen Heart, Frozen, and Betrayal. Okay. Those are very traditional items of uh, the, the movies. Yeah. They so you get the idea. You need to wear gloves and you're going to have fingerprints all over it. That's what the, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I like a big, those are nice looking pieces. Are they plastic? No, Megan, they're metal. Gary, Megan says I'm back. I hope I didn't miss anything ridiculous because Lord knows I don't get enough of that with these guys as family. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, as soon as I get bench? Wow, and even look at this. This is the inside box. I know. It goes over it. They had this, no, they it, had it stays inside the box. So is it is it Spanish or is it French or what? It's French. English and French. English and English French. And French. Oh, oh. They had this and then they had some frozen um you know the little fishing games that kids use with the little fishing pole and yeah. The wheel goes around. They had that in a frozen. They also had, um, oh golly, what's the game that has the dome in the center and you push it to roll trouble. the die? Trouble. They had uh, frozen trouble. Oh, oh, very nice. But I pulled the Monopoly. I like that the best. So that will be going out to you, Mike. Early Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sherry, how is that rice looking? Oh, my goodness. Just about there. It's just about ready. Yep, it's just about there. And, shall we check these then? Do you have a... Uh, a what? Uh, you know what I mean. No, a trivet? Yes, thank you. One of those things. Yeah, a trivet. There you go. Part B. I'm going to go ahead and stick the Part camera B. down a bit. Hey, Richard says the rice looks awesome. So does Donna. Oh, my goodness. Let's look at that. That is nice and bubbly. Now, put your finger in this side yep. if it's warm. No, 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 no. So Jonathan Chong saw you the can come Oreo. Over here, Gary Ben. Jonathan Chong saw the Sorry. Oreo cookie popcorn. It's delicious. It's, it's delicious. It's really good. So let me get. Actually, my friend Sean was at Kroger the other day, or was it Meyer? No, it was Meyer, and he found Butterfinger Oreo. Um, I think Reese's. There were a bunch of different popcorns. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. All the same uh, brand of pop popcorn. Wow. That's cool. This, this looks delicious, Sherry. Yeah. The, uh, this is, by the way, this is our dinner. <laughs> this is your dinner? We'll need to try. Yeah. This is going to be tomorrow. our dinner tomorrow night. Oh, gotcha. They warm up really well. Yeah. That is one thing about these. The enchiladas that we make, they're wonderful, uh, warmed up. Yes. Oh, yes. How's the rice coming along? It, the rice is done. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, sure. That looks very good. You didn't put the Spanish olives in it. I never do. Well, I want that. The olives. That's not not in standard Mexican rice. I do rice. that in arroz con arroz pollo. Con pollo. Re, uh, requires olives, but I do olives and capers in a con pollo, but not in my my Mexican rice. Okay, what happened to the can? No frozen uh -oh. cam. What happened there? Oh, looks like they froze up a bit. So anyway, they've got the enchiladas going, and they have the the Spanish rice going. So it looks like they did a very nice job. Yeah, with that. I think we uh, we lost them. I'm so sorry, people. We, they have frozen up right now. So please stand by. <laughs> so there's something. There seems to be something wrong with the internet connection at their yeah. house right now. So uh, they're they, gonna, they blew off. Yeah, so they're they're going to be coming back on, and then we will probably say our. So what do you guys want to know about? But the uh, Spanish rice is uh, a different recipe. Doug makes it a different I make way. I it a little bit different, but yeah. same technique. I use measuring spoons. I measure. Yeah. Doug measures everything. Because I believe in uniformity. I believe in consistency. <laughs> because I don't want to work really hard and think about it. Once I know I plop it in, that's exactly a teaspoon of oregano. Yeah. So that's mine. So... I like my rice plain like that. Airplane frozen. Wanda needs to use canned because she can't have flour. But we can fix that because it's really good. Um, what's that thing? Yeah, Ben. Yeah, you're yeah, toast. you froze, Ben. Bye bye. So, uh, yeah, bye go bye, dog. Go ahead and log back in. And there they are. They're coming back in now. So, uh, there's the kitchen. You can see the smoke, or it's not the smoke, but the steam. From the rice is coming off now. That looks really good, Sherry. That's amazing. And then Ben will be logging in soon with his laptop as well, and uh, we'll get the audio back with them as well. But man, that rice—it turned out nice and fluffy and cooked very fast. Yours is about the same. Yeah. I used to put it in a saute pan, and ours is a little bit just a skosh different. Yeah, ours is. Doug makes it just slightly different than that. So uh, we usually have, um, what else do you put in there with it? You have like a some... A teaspoon of, uh, I haven't memorized. A teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of cumin, a half te teaspoon of oregano. And then, there you go. Uh, another Dougism. He calls it oregano. Because that's what it is. Then I mix it up, put three dashes of Tabasco, some salt and pepper, not too much. Uh, let me just go into a different um, window. Arnie, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh. We can hear you. So, uh, Ben's trying to get back on, and I don't have the speakers on my, my laptop. Gotcha. I turned them off. Okay. Okay. Well, at least we can... Just let him do it here, Ben? Yeah. Turn him back on. Yeah. We can. We Hold can, on, can, guys. Okay. They're your voices. They're having a little bit of. Did we do that? Yeah. And Megan says, "I don't do canned sauce. Once you've had Grandma's homemade gravy, you they can't have to eat anything else, unless it's not the best sauce, but they don't exist. You have to open. You have to pull the the bar over. Oh, this. Yeah. Well, Ultima is a. Uh, Click the green button. La Ultima is one of those restaurants right by the house in Oakland. Sadly, they went out of business. They had the best mole sauce. I really miss that place. Mm -hmm. So Ben and Sherry are working on getting the other computer. Please com stand by. They're getting ready to get the other computer up and running. Hopefully they can get that going. But uh, in the meantime, Doug, you use... Oh, and then so I make it and I let it sit a while. And then I cook, I toast a cup of medium green rice with some olive oil and then toast. So it's just get a little toasty. Then I take it off the burner because it just <laughs> all over the place. So I put it in the sink and then I dump it because it all over the place. Yeah. And then I put it back on the burner and I put the lid on it and we're good to go. Yeah. We have Spanish rice a -roni and it's from scratch. That's what he calls it. He calls it rice a -roni. I because guess. Because we live in San Francisco area. Yeah. I guess I could say that.
He does call it a rice roni. Yeah. I have nicknames. Pork chop night, frozen baggy night. All Dougisms. I don't have anything that is a normal word. <laughs> it's true. Night was uh, pizza. So Paula Dean is another one. Yeah, we are trying to yeah, get Yeah, we, we lost them. They're, no, the camera is still there. I mean, the camera, the rice is still there. They're moving around. They've got it going. But uh, unfortunately, Ben's computer, I'm not sure what happened there. Well, they didn't probably reboot. They didn't probably do a speed test. Yeah. You know? Those are the things that happen live. Uh, so we're doing uh, a Halloween uh, tree, people. A live show is uh, very interesting sometimes. We got a Halloween tree. Yeah. A couple things, a couple things that we wanted to mention. Doug, yeah, the Halloween tree. Yeah. It's up, it's fluffed, and it's lit. Yeah. Still need to get the ornaments for it, but it's been hotter than Hades out here, so. Definitely. I mean... <laughs> it has been pretty bad. But the thing is that we have not just the tree, but we have our patio. <sighs> the patio was so finally good. poured. It was stamped. And you're going to see all of that in the moment of Groovy at the end of the show. We just want to make sure that we get Ben and Sherry back up so that they can sample the food with you on there. <laughs> oh, they don't have anything. They're boring. Asking, Where are Arnieisms and Benisms? No, it's actually... They're too proper and Pollyanna. They just like formal. You say it. Don't get fancy with the words. And then I'm like... There no... What's what's life without whimsy? Yeah. yeah we definitely. need to get googly eyes on that thing. So I know what to look at. Googly eyes? Oh, on, on this? Yeah, because I'm not looking at it. We're looking at the camera I need to here. look at you guys, but I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm up here, and I'm looking over here. Yeah, so, yeah, like Ben said, he's rebooting his, his laptop. He wants to make sure that uh, he and Cher are able to say goodnight to everyone. Yeah, so they can go eat. I hope but, they have sour cream, because so I, I, can't eat, I can't eat it without sour cream. Enchiladas are great with sour cream. Now, Ben, and, uh, ben saw the patio. He loved it. You'll see it all in the moment of Groovy. It happened Wednesday. Wednesday. They finally did. I was at work. And came home and saw this wonderful patio. It turned out a lot better than I expected. Still, we need to pressure wash it and seal it. And, you know, a partridge in a pear tree. But yeah. it's turning out really well. Everything that goes along with it. And that's just step one in the backyard. We're redoing the entire yard. It's been a glacial thing. Yeah. Ugh. It started last summer. And now we are working at trying to get the whole thing redone. We'll probably have it finished by, what, maybe spring? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to do the giant Mickey head landscape feature. I would like to try to get it done by fall. Yes. But right now I'm so exhausted. The Mickey and landscape like, that he's talking about is a, a lawn. We're going to put in a, a giant Mickey, a 15 by 15 foot giant Mickey head. You can see from Google Earth. Yeah, we're going to put in a mouse mouse head yep. in, in the backyard for the lawn. So uh, Trying to explain it to the lawn people was like I had lobsters coming out of my ears. <laughs> I said, I want a Mickey head. I wanted this, and they just. So I said, "Here's the picture." Oh, Mars saying, oh. "No, what did Sherry get this week?" Uh, you know, she. They were really focused on getting a lot of cooking done tonight. They had a lot in the kitchen going. And let's assign this to uh, number one. And. There we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hi. Cannot hear you, actually. No, we can't. No, oh, wait, I got, I've, got to, I've, got to, I've got to unmute you. Go up. Oh, no, no. No, the other one go up. No, there we go. Oh, well, sorry, you're muted. We can't hear you. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Finally sounds. Okay. Okay, yeah. now can you hear us? Yes. Okay, I don't know what's going on. We just couldn't do it. So what we'll do is we will... Let me plate some of this up for Ben. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, now that's really nice and clear. Okay, you guys are froze again. 
We're just gonna piece you guys out. There you go. Oh, there, there you go. Okay, that does look like a lasagna. Yeah, but it's a, it's a big gooey mess. Gooey Hang mess on. is good. Let me get you some rice. Does it have mushrooms in it? It's enchiladas, Doug. Doesn't what has does that bell have pepper mushrooms? and onion in it? No. Just onion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bland. Okay. Here. Uh, Okay, Ben. Are we ready for this? You we're need sour we are cream. ready for this. You can't choke down. Cheesy goodness. Be careful, it's hot. Oh yeah. That's delicious. Yeah. I do have sour cream in the fridge though. So yeah, you have to choke it down. Sour cream with, is also with enchiladas. You have to choke it down with sour cream. Paul said yeah. O M G that it's looks very good. good. And downscale. Because it's too hot. He burned his mouth and now he's taking a dry coke. Down. Down. I know, but I'm turning it up. <laughs> Down scale's jealous of it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot, of, and it does look creamy. Lots of cheese it's in very it. Very creamy. Yeah. Mm, okay. Creamy. Well, that's wonderful. Thank, well, thank you so much for doing yeah. the food demo. That was a wonderful opportunity for... Uh, there you go. That was great for uh, our food and wine festival here this month. Yeah. We'll be back yeah. next week with another food demo here from our kitchen. Okay. We'll let you know what that is a little later, I'm though. Thinking. <laughs> uh, Depending on weather. So, thanks thanks so much for sticking with us. I mean, my gosh. Technical glitches. My, my laptop is still spinning here. I don't know what's going what? on. Uh -huh. Megan says the girl is literally growling while she's watching you eat. <laughs> Why? But Donna wants to, she's jealous that she can't taste it. And Benji says, yeah. I already had dinner, but now I'm hungry again. Yeah, it's Yeah, delicious. I'll tell you, this one is fantastic. This we this is a fav, family favorite of ours. And yeah. the thing is that it's, it's flexible enough that you can add different flavors to meet your own taste. So, yeah. Ooh, fajitas. Mm, yeah, that would be nice. Ah. And actually, yeah. actually, the recipe for the sauce could be used like for wet burritos if you wanted. You you don't need to use it just for enchiladas. You could use it for almost anything that you would you could think of where you would put a sauce on it. Yeah, definitely. So but we'll be back next Monday, same time, nine thirty Eastern, six thirty Pacific for yeah. another episode of PTV Live celebrating Food and Wine Month. Everyone, thank you so much for the super chats tonight. Thank you. That was very Wanda. kind. Yeah, we had there was another person Trina. Cynthia. Cynthia. Yeah. Very, another girl. We said <laughs> Katrina. Uh, Katrina. Katrina started even before yeah. the show started. She was doing it during the countdown. Yeah. And she gave us yeah. a super chat. It was very nice of her. So everyone, thank you so much to our, our moderators. Thank you for the help. And to our support channels, of course. Thank you so much for all that support that you give us. We can't do it without you. And uh, I guess Ben, you've got Life with Ben coming up this week. What's going on? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, we, uh, where did we go? <laughs> oh, we, we went to Wong's. We went to Wong's. We had Chinese food. Arnie, Doug, and I had Chinese food. So, um, that was, that was really delicious. Yeah. You're going to find out more on, to, on Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, when Life with Ben starts streaming episode 112. All part of 925 Day. We're getting <laughs> so anyway uh we will be back next week thank you so much we'll have another cooking episode next monday um wow life with ben's tan sweet <laughs> okay let's get on to okay, what we everyone. did okay so you're going to see the patio you're going to see a little bit of Backstage magic with Ben's episode of Life with Ben when we recorded here at the at the house, but that's all part of the moment of groovy everyone. So everyone have a magical evening, have a great big beautiful tomorrow, and now your moment of groovy. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.